Hello, 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 and good morning, and welcome to Conversations with JR, and happy Tuesday. I hope that your Labor Day weekend was great. I hope your creative Monday for Labor Day was great, and I know a lot of you are wondering why JR is holding up a sign that says hate. You know, no, I'm not an advocate of hate. I'm a believer in love. I am a believer of sister love, brother love. I am a, um, in a believer of love. But I just wanted to come and have this conversation and this discussion with you today on this, this emotion, this negative emotion, this negative word called hate. And I just want you to know this. Hate, the word hate, is an intense passion and dislike for a thing or a person. That's what hate is. And I just want you to know that the hate or the, let's say the racial tension that is going on right now, hate has always been here. Since the beginning of civilization, hate have always been here, but it's been disguised. The struggle has begun since the beginning of civilization for group A to dominate group B. And even though group B may have an increased population and we might be stronger in population, I want to make clear today to let you know that it is the resources that group A has, the dominant group, it is the resources that group A has in their possession and how they use their resources. This is the reason why they're able to dominate and suppress group B. Even though group B might be stronger in population, they use their resources. And when they use their resources to accomplish their goal, they make group B look like we are unworthy, that we are the weak link, and that we are unworthy of basic human rights. And when I say that they use their resources, group A use their resources, this is the reason why we plead for Black people to build Black businesses, to pump their money into Black businesses, into building our own community. That is a way of using our resources so that we won't be beggars. And so we won't be, be always depending on group A for our resources because that's what's going on right now. Now, some people claim that this increase uh, or this current atmosphere of hate is because of president number 45. Now, there is no denying that number 45 has made his position clear from the very beginning since the beginning of his campaign four years ago, he has made his position clear on how he felt towards immigrants and people of color, all people of color, okay? I don't care if you want to exclude yourself, Asian, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Brazilian, all brown people, all people of color. He has told you and showed you how he feels towards you. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with being honest because let me let, let me just tell you something. His mission and his goal to make America great again, and they're trying to go for a four, another four years to make America great again. That mission and that goal has nothing to do with the people of color, the community of people of color. That is for the white, the privileged, the wealthy, and the elite. It has nothing um, to do with us. And let me tell you something. You want to know why he has strength and popula popularity? I'm going to tell you why. Because there are millions and millions of people. I said this when he first ran for president. There are millions and millions of people who out there think like he does, feel like he does, but they were cowards. They didn't want to stand out there and voice it. They was cowards because they felt like they had too much to lose. Number 45, he puts it out there. 
He tells you how he feels. He's unmovable. And let me tell you something. The cowards hide behind him and they support him with voting and with finances. Something that the black community need to start doing with their political leaders. And listen, if you haven't noticed, let me be the one to be the bearer of bad news. Or maybe this isn't bad news for you. Number 45 don't even care about his haters. <laughs> he walks over them like they are cockroaches, okay? He doesn't even care about his haters. So that is something that you need to um that you need to pay attention to. Listen. Hate was here long before number 45 was put into the presidency. Okay? But again, there is no denying that there has been an increase, if you've been paying attention, there has been an increase in racial tension. And the increase in anger and protest is due to the political leaders, our political leaders on the federal, the state, and the city level, if you pay attention to what they're doing. Now, they, 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 they have a scapegoat now. For letting this get out of, uh, um, for letting this get out of control, and then they want to blame the mayors of each state and the leaders of each state for allowing the protests and the anger and the racial tension to get out of control. So the top political leaders they claim that they are so busy with this fight against the coronavirus and and trying to stabilize the economy. They are so busy with that that they do not have time to sit down with leaders of the black community. None of them have time to sit down, to engage in a conversation of how we are going to move towards change, how we're going to make progress. They are so involved in what they are doing that they don't have time. And people are starting to notice this. We're totally ignored. This racial tension, these murders, these shootings, the, it is totally being ignored. Who are these issues affecting the most? Pay attention. Who are these issues affecting the most? Listen, the political leader's refusal to acknowledge that there is a problem, to really, really acknowledge that there is a problem, is not the fact that Black lives don't matter. Hear me out. What doesn't matter to them is the issue that plagued the black community. That's what doesn't matter to them. What listen, what issues am I what issue what issues am I talking about? Okay, listen, here we go. Police brutality. It's increasing. It's not decreasing. I'm stopping first. It's increasing. It's not decreasing. Um, segregated schools and neighborhood. People say that's a thing of the past. We still live in segregated schools and segregated neighborhoods. The black and the brown community has the worst schools. These dilapidated schools with lack of materials, lack of resources, lack of funding, lack of good teachers, lack of good leadership. Go to the white community and see how pearly white their schools are. Um, the double standards in health care, the double standards in due process. And this is just a short list of a very, very long list, long list of things that don't matter to the political leader. It only matters to them when it's an election year. Do you understand that they purposely allow this to go away? Because they are concentrating on being reelected. And people of color are sitting back with your anger instead of getting up and vote. We need a massive push in voting. You keep saying, I keep hearing people saying, well, we don't know what Biden and his running mate is going to do. You don't know what they're going to do, but look what's being done to us already. What is being done to us already? November will be upon us. So everyone who is sitting around, twirling their thumbs, being angry, and you have a right to be angry. Let me back that up. You have a right to be angry. You have a right to be angry because the system keeps failing people of color 
over and over and over. But you know what? That's not an excuse for you not to go out and, and vote. And and people of color, please stop talking about uh, what Barack Obama didn't do. That was then, this is now. You have political leaders right now who are not even acknowledging the pain, the sorrow, and the suffering that people in the black community are going through. But yet, you want to go way back there and talk about what Barack Obama did not do. We didn't have this craziness when Barack Obama was president. So stop trying to mar that man's administration and concentrate on what's going on now. All of these things that, that's plaguing the, the, the black community, this hatred of us, this demoralization of us, this disrespect of us, this is the problem that has manifest this big fog of hate. And let me tell you something now. You see all those white people that are out there and Chinese people and all these people of color that are out there marching with us? You want to know why they're marching with us? Because it's affecting them. It's affecting them. You know, these, these elite people who are in their little bubbles right now, those bubbles are bursting one by one. The privileged race continues to add fuel to the fire. They continue to add fuel for the fire, to the fire. They are increasing. They are increasing what's going on in our community by not speaking out. Not speaking out and not doing something is allowing this to happen. It is allowing people this to happen. Black men are just still getting brutally gunned down, shot. And let me tell you something else about hate. People of color, yes, I am talking to you. We need to stop this black on black crime and black on black hate. The other day, the first thing that I, I, I saw in the news, a Juve celebration, five people got shot. Every year, five people got shot. We need to stop this violence between us and our neighborhood. We need to stop it. The guns are not the answer. The violence is not the answer. The anger is not the answer. The looting is not the answer. Why all this hate from the privileged race? Because they feel that we are the problem. Don't you understand that? They see us as a problem. So as soon as you go out there and ride and loot and, and, and sell drugs and kill each other and, 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 and tear down your community, you are giving them the leeway, the resources. You are giving them the evidence that they need to say, this is why we don't help them. This is why we don't help them. They see us as the problem. They do not want to solve our problems because they don't think that they had a hand in creating these problems. What is it going to take? It's going to take a lot. And it's not going to happen overnight. Sitting down and talking is the first line of defense. Sitting down like civilized people and talking is the first, because we need to understand each other. Do you understand that these political leaders don't even want to sit down and talk to us? They don't even want to hear us out. And it seems like a lot of the black leaders, they have given up. They out there campaigning. Pay attention where they campaigning at. They are out there campaigning. They are out there getting elected. Pay attention to how many Republicans and Democrats are, are people of color. Where are they for us? Where are they for us? But the leaders of the world, they don't even want to sit down and have a conversation with us. So they're, they're showing you better than they can tell you. You know what it's going to take? It's going to take honest people, these men. It's going to take honest people to stand up and say, own this that they have been a part of the problem since the beginning of civilization. They have created this. When you go to school, are you paying attention? 
from the time of the Native Americans, who are the true Americans, from the time of the Native Americans since they landed, the Native Americans have been here. They have been killing, stealing, robbing. They have been looting, raping, pillaging, taking everything for themselves and pushing everybody else away. They don't, they don't believe in equality. They don't believe in sharing. We need to start taking from them and pump it into our own businesses, create our own schools, create things for ourselves. We can do it because you want to know why? We are stronger in population. And if we take the monies that we have and build our own resources, and stop depending on them. Look how many the thousands and millions of people right now who are depending on them for resources and they are refusing to sign bills. They are deliberately refusing to sign bills. Deliberately refusing to sign bills. As I said before, it's going to take honest people, honest men to sit down and realize that there is a problem, stop placing blame, and come up and, and, and hear if hear each side, hear each side feeling, and realize that they have been a part of this struggle for a very long time, and that we're all going to be a part of the solution. We are all going to be a part of sovereignness. We all have to have our say, and we all have to be a part of sovereignness. We all have to. One man, we have one man in the White House, one man in the White House, and it seems like Everybody is fearing this one man. And you know, I like to, you know, I always like to throw this in there, you know, and I'm not hating on anybody, but I like to know where are all the religious leaders. I would like to know where all the religious leaders are. They're too busy trying to get their churches back open and um, um, opening up cash apps uh, on Facebook to get in contribution. Where are our political leaders? I mean, we're about church leaders. Where are you when the community needs you? They need your prayer. They need your leadership. They need your guidance. They need you. Where are you? Where are you? So that's what I have to say today on Conversations with JR about this, this ugly word called hate. Please like and share. Um, you can find Conversations with JR on all social media platforms. Please subscribe to my YouTube page where I have a lot more videos. I would like to hear what you have to say. This is what I have to say. We need an increased presence of leadership in the black community. Where is the NAACP? Where are these organizations? We need you. We need you. Until the next time, I hope that the conversations that you are having in your home is of love and peace. And I am telling my black people, please sit down and let your children know that. Go through the history books. We have a beautiful, rich history. But don't, don't teach hate. Because as you can see, it's not doing us any good. I'll see you on Creative Monday. Have a great week.